Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is Earnings Special where we are going to be focusing on 8 sale techs quarterly earnings. The company managed to post a robust set of numbers in Q3. We've seen for the de December quarter, the 8 sale technologies has actually posted a 6.2% year-on-year growth in net profit at 4,351 odd crore rupees, a 6.5% year-on-year in the consolidated revenues which have come in at 28,446 odd crore rupees as well. Of course, uh, dividend has also been declared by the company and several parameters have actually been a beat on the street expectations as far as the Q3 numbers go. Now, to detail for us uh, what really went uh, strong for the company in this quarter and the outlook going forward, I'm joined by two very special guests, top management of the company, Mr. Prateek Agarwal, CFO of Sale Tech Points In. Also with us is Ramachandran Sundarajan. He is the Chief People's Officer at HCL Tech. Welcome to both of you to Business Today Television and thanks a lot for taking the time out for this discussion. Okay, to start off this discussion, Pratik, with you, tell us, you know, uh, you really mentioned when the press conference is on uh, in cricket parlance that you really uh, hit it out of the park uh, on all accounts this time around as well. So congratulations, first of all, for posting those robust set of numbers to you. And, um, you know, how is the macro environment uh, looking like in terms of demand and client spends? Has it really improved from the last quarter that we spoke about as well? Because the large your concern is not very, very, uh, you know, from your peers also, we've not heard very confident um, statements coming around that, you know, things are looking up or bright. I want to understand from you, how are things shaping up? So, Sakshi, first of all, uh, very happy new year to all the viewers and to you and uh, everyone, uh, everyone at uh, Business Today. And uh, also, this is the harvest season and all festivals around various states. Uh, happy Lodi, happy Makar Shakranti and all the Pongal and every every other festival. Uh, coming to the numbers, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, this was quite a sixer of a quarter, as I said. And uh, that has been led by three large uh, factors. Uh, number one is, of course, the a mega deal that we had announced, uh, you know, coming on, uh, you know, as bang on schedule, uh, November 1st and uh, contributing two months of uh, good large revenue to the services business. Uh, the second one, obviously, is the phenomenal outperformance by our software business. Uh, on a sequential basis, it's a 32%, but that's just seasonality. The number to note is the 5% year-on-year growth, which is also very special uh, in these times and, uh, you know, for this business. Uh, and the third factor is the inorganic acquisition that we had done of uh, ASAP, uh, the German uh, auto engineering company, uh, which delivered just one month in the previous quarter and was a full uh, three months of the quarter in this quarter. Uh, as well as the organic growth that we saw in the ERND business. Uh, so that also helped. All these three, four factors really helped us uh, get that sixer. Absolutely. So tell us, you know, how is your biggest market, the US market, shaping up? By when do you really see it recover completely? Especially why I'm asking this is because this is going to see a lot of political developments, election year happening that time. Is that going to be an added on challenge uh, for IT companies at large and for you? Well, we can only hope it doesn't. <laughs> Nobody can tell for yeah. sure. Uh, to your earlier question also, I think uh, in the IT and business services, uh, the discretionary element uh, of the work, uh, which you know gave us very good growth in FY21, 22, and uh, calendar 22 as well, uh, that has still not come back uh, you know, the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. So that continues to be... Uh, something that we have our fingers crossed and waiting for that to come back. Uh, as far as elections are concerned, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess at this moment <laughs> of time. Uh, there are all kinds of trends that uh, people talk about. But uh, I think, the you know, I have this theory called uh, QQC. Uh, QQC stands for number one quantity uh, you know, just the number of engineers and uh, software and uh, infra engineers that we have in the in India as a country is so phenomenal. And uh, US doesn't really have that many people. Uh, and then the second one is quality at scale. Uh, 
so first is Q is quantity and the second is quality and then the third is cost, right? So QQC really should ensure uh, there can always be small uh, hiccups, uh, one quarter or two, uh, but uh, over a long run period, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, this uh, trend uh, should uh, continue. Okay, the trend should continue going forward as well. But, uh, you know, Pratik, despite uh, the robust performance, you've actually cut your uh, upper end of the uh, guidance when it comes to revenues to 5.5%. Why is that then when we're seeing, uh, you know, despite the seasonality and the weakness in the quarter, or despite higher furloughs that usually happen in this quarter, you've actually posted very, very strong numbers. Why the need for uh, cutting the guidance on the upper end? So these uh, strong numbers were uh, after taking into account uh, pretty significantly higher uh, furloughs. So, uh, you know, if you look at our revised guidance, five to five and a half percent, it is first of all the highest uh, amongst uh, tier one uh, large cap uh, IT companies. Uh, secondly, even this means that our fourth quarter asking rate uh, is 1.6 to 3.5% uh, for our services uh, growth. Uh, so 1.6 to 3.5 is a decent growth in any quarter and uh, certainly in these times that we are going through. And uh, that again is premised on uh, three, four things. Uh, number one, you know, where, uh, we do have one extra uh, quarter of the mega deal uh, coming in. So last quarter was just two months and the full three month impact will be there in March quarter. And uh, the second is, of course, the furloughs that were there in the previous quarter are not expected to repeat. And uh, there will be some furloughs in Asia in January, but uh, mm -hmm. it's nothing compared to what we saw in the previous quarter. And then the third thing is uh, engineering hopefully continues to show uh, the kind of uh, growth it has shown on an organic basis uh, because the ASAP is now fully full three months impact has already come in. On an organic basis, we do expect it to uh, continue to grow and the rest of the business comes in as well. So we are looking forward to a good uh, growth quarter. Okay, uh, I'll come to you for, uh, you know, discussions on deal wins on and AI as well. But let me bring uh, Mr. Sundarajan also in the conversation right now. And of course, there's been positive in the space that you deal with, sir, as well. Attrition is now at a seven-year low. That's very, very, uh, you know, strong number that we've uh, reported at 12.8%. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, what is the sense that you have now? Is this uh, going to be the norm? Uh, are you hold, uh, you know, could it be sustainable going forward? What really led to this uh, positive number on attrition, and what's the outlook now? I think twelve point eight percent in the December quarter is one of the best quarters that we have had in many many years. Uh, sequentially, it's a one point four percent drop uh, year on year. It's almost a nine percent drop. It's one of the best quarters. Uh, we expect attrition to sort of stabilize around similar levels uh, as we look forward for subsequent quarters. Uh, we do expect that we will see growth kick in. And as growth kicks in, uh, you would expect uh, uh, recruiting activities to, to also increase, which means the demand supply situation will not continue to be the way it currently is. So there will be some uh, pressure. Uh, there will also be uh, pressure in terms of uh, uh, costs, right? Compensation is likely to uh, only increase as the uh, demand increases. Uh, the skills you alluded to, uh, Gen AI, uh, uh, as, as the skills transformation happens, we need to invest uh, on, on skills development. Uh, compensation is likely to uh, uh, go up. So we expect attrition overall to stabilize around the uh, 12 to 14 percent range uh, in the uh, in the coming quarters. Uh, mm. Ultimately, it's all down to what opportunities we give for people internally, you know, be it uh, opportunities to uh, upskill. Uh, be it opportunities to uh, progress their careers internally. So uh, if you're able to present opportunities internally as much as one would expect opportunities externally, I think that's the single biggest factor that contributes to uh, uh, to retention. So all in all, it's a good story for the December quarter. Uh, we expect this to sort of stabilize uh, in the coming quarters at the same similar levels. Uh, Mr. Sundarajan, the only concern I think with respect to attrition is with the, uh, you know, uh, management level and top level turn that we are seeing industry wide at this point in time. Is that a uh, growing concern for you as well? Uh, you know, is it getting more difficult to retain the talent at the top level at this point in time? 
if yes then what is the plan on dealing with it at this point in time especially at a time when you've not even extended wage hikes at the top level is that one of the reasons why it's getting more difficult for you now sir i would say that you know that's not a concern for us for a simple reason that if we look at our, uh, our top 10% uh, uh, for employee group uh, the attrition levels not just now but uh, many many years we consistently been a very low single digit so we have a very stable uh, leadership team and a very stable uh, uh, mid management uh, level uh, so that is not something that we would call out as a uh, as a concern and we uh, we believe that that uh, level of retention is not necessarily uh, a function of compensation one year cycle skip and this and that it's largely a function of the work environment and the culture that we promote within the organization of course at that level uh, people continue to stay with you uh, because they get excited by what they do uh, the level of autonomy that they have in the work that we do and the uh, uh, culture of uh, entrepreneurship yeah. that we uh, that we continue to uh, uh, maintain Uh, i think those are the drivers and you would see that you know uh, yes we do have one or the uh, senior members of our team uh, leave uh, but generally you wouldn't see uh, a spate of attrition at that level so that's not a big concern area for us uh, our challenge is going to be to uh, uh, maintain the culture that we have maintained all these years as we mm. grow, uh, as we promote people internally as we inject more uh, leadership talent from outside how do we maintain that cohesive culture that we have had i think that's going to be uh, important for us uh, which we have done successfully over the years and we expect to be able to maintain that uh, in the coming years as well so Uh, not a big challenge as we uh, look at it okay okay i'll come back to you for the employee uh, and hiring plans as well going forward uh, but uh, you know just like i was mentioning that ben ai is the big buzzword which we've been discussing with you at least in person in from business today television for the last three quarters i remember and every time you've been pretty positive about uh, you know it's iltex focus on gen ai now tell us uh, you know uh, is there the share of gen ai orders increasing in terms of the deal wins as well ever as the details of ai deals in pipeline what is the outlook really look like by when do we see meaningful contribution from such ai orders coming in into the revenue contribution for you so obviously gen ai continues to be the occupy the pole position amongst all the emerging technologies uh see gen ai by itself might uh, take a little bit of time because uh, you know it is the a lot of preparatory work that needs to get done uh please remember that uh, you know the large language models you really can't use the public ones uh, and expose uh, any company can't really expose their internal data to the public uh, chat gpts and uh, so on and so forth right so each company will have to build their own large language model which takes time to train the models right that's number one the second is the cyber security and uh, you know confidentiality and privacy uh, kind of considerations that you have to take into account while building those models and the third is also that the data that you want the models to ingest and uh, then deliver the output from uh, needs to be worked on quite a bit uh, so there is a data modernization cyber security as well as building the model time that uh, goes into this uh, so that is why it is going to take time but the preparatory work on the data side cyber security is probably what will come first and has already started coming uh, and that is uh, the bigger piece actually at this moment in time okay adam let me uh, bring you in uh, in terms of the demand for gen ai just like how it is uh, increasing was that uh, is that going to lead you to also increase in external hiring as well uh, what would be the impact on uh, hiring as far as gen ai focus is concerned for hcl tech so i, I think uh, it's going to be a combination of both external hiring as well as uh, internal uh, upskilling that we need to do uh, in fact i would think that uh, we would end up investing more uh in upskilling internally uh as much as we would uh, focus on external hiring so priority now is going to be more uh, internal upskilling uh, mm. if you look at uh, if you look at in the last uh, uh three quarters uh we have uh, got more than 42000 uh, uh people trained and certified uh, in in use of gen ai and large language models mm. that is going to uh, continue 
So far as external hiring is concerned, it's going to be very focused uh, into our uh, Gen AI and data practice. Uh, but that's not going to be in large volumes. It's going to be for very niche skills. Uh, but the uh, the volume play is going to come from uh, internal uh, uh, upskilling. So investments, we'll expect to see more uh, into uh, upskilling efforts, uh, supplemented by uh, targeted uh, external hiring into our uh, Gen AI and data practice. That's the way we look. Okay, uh, pretty just one or two last questions that I have. Uh, one on how FY25 is looking like for you vis-a-vis -vis FY24. Is it going to be a better year? Which are the growth drivers that you're betting big on? Is it going to be services again, which has really led the show this time around in this quarter? Uh, will BFSI also pick up pace, which has seen a dip this time around? How would you really look at the entire new fiscal going forward? I think we have, we are like that plane with all engines firing. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, services, like you said, would uh, certainly be expected to lead the charge. Uh, software, as it has shown this quarter and in the last 12 months, I mean, in the last 12 months, software has grown 4.2% year on year. So they should uh, join the bandwagon and uh, uh, we continue to have a very good mix of uh, businesses and good mix of people and uh, good strategies and uh, capabilities so we should be we should be well we are well placed uh, if you go by the exit rate that we will have in the march quarter which is the exit quarter uh, i think we should be well set i'll come back to next quarter to talk about <laughs> fi25 uh, otherwise Okay, Adam, last question to you, and then we will wind up this conversation. Employee edition has been strong 36-17 this time around as well. As compared to the peers, it's been much better. But going forward, uh, how do you yeah. see the hiring plans going forward? You know, uh, uh, you know, our concerns around uh, fulfilling the commitment to rolled out offers initially, a thing of the past that industry was, uh, you know, looking at over the last three quarters. So this quarter net addition, if you see, uh, uh, we have... Uh come out of two quarters of uh, negative net, net headcount increases this quarter, largely contributed by the ramp up that we had to do for one of our uh, uh, mega deals uh, from last quarter. Plus also we had uh, uh, 3,800 freshers added this quarter and that is continuing a commitment to onboard freshers for whom we have made offers. That's going to continue in uh, Q4 as well. So the fresher onboarding for Q4 will continue. A services business where uh, we have projected the growth for this quarter. We will continue our hiring for that, for lateral hiring as well. So Q4 is expected to be a net headcount uh, increase uh, so far as we are concerned. Uh, that momentum we expect uh, uh, will continue into uh, FY25 as well. Exact numbers for FY25 uh, will be finalizing during the course of this quarter, but we expect the momentum to continue. Okay, all the very best to you. Thanks a lot for speaking to us on Business Today Television and sparing all your time uh, and uh, wishing you again a very happy new year. Very happy, happy new year, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.